Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation. Radical equations are awesome and this is no exception. So normally, if you're trying to solve a radical equation, you would basically just take one of the radicals, right, and I try to isolate it. So let's go ahead and try to isolate the cube root here, for example. I can just go ahead and subtract the square root of x minus 1 and then isolate it this way. And typically, you would try to cube both sides, right, because you want to get rid of the radical and this would be, you know, the usual method. But here's the problem. When you cube this, you're going to be cubing a square root, which is not going to help you simplify the radical. It's going to get worse. So this is going to get messier and messier. So you don't want to do that. So that's why we're going to be using a different method here. So our method involves something different, and that's a very powerful method in math, and it's called substitution. All right? So here's how we're going to use substitution here. Now, we have an equation in a single variable. For the time being, we're going to turn it into more variables, but don't worry, we're going to simplify that again. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call the first radical, let's say y, and the other radical I'm going to call that z. Now, I could write, instead of calling that z, I could write it in terms of y, so on and so forth, but I don't want to do that because this is more fun. First of all, notice that from here, we do get a linear equation, which can be written as y plus z is equal to 1. Nice. Not only that, we get more results. For example, because the cube root of 2, x, 2 minus x is equal to y, I can cube both sides, and that's going to give me 2 minus x is equal to y cubed. And then from the second radical, which is the z, if you square both sides, you're going to get x minus 1 is equal to z squared. Great. Now, I could just, you know, solve this as a system, and there are three variables and three equations, so we're good, but some variables are not linear, right? For example, you have the y and the y cubed, you have the z and the z squared, so on and so forth. So in this case, since x only appears as a linear, let's try to write everything pretty much in terms of x, right? So from here, what can I write? Let's see what we have. Okay, so one thing that I can do from here is obviously I can isolate the y and write it as 1 minus z, right? Okay, great. So I can do that. And then uh, here I can write the x as in terms of y, for example, or I can write the x in terms of z. So I can say, hey, x can be written as z squared plus 1, right? Okay, so now with those two things, I can just go ahead and use the second equation and then substitute those. For example, I can replace the x with z squared plus 1. So it's going to look like this. 2 minus the quantity z squared plus 1. And on the right-hand side, I have y cubed, which can be written as 1 minus z quantity cubed. Great. So don't expand the cube yet because we're going to simplify this more. So 2 minus 1, that's going to give me 1 minus z squared. And then on the right-hand side, I have 1 minus z cubed. Of course, you don't want to simplify that. Why? Because 1 minus z squared is factorable by difference of 2 squared. So let's go ahead and do that. This can be written as 1 plus z times 1 minus z. And what I'd like to do is I want to bring the cube over here to the left-hand side as 1 minus z cubed. So I'm going to subtract that so that the whole thing is equal to 0. Great. Now, notice that 1 minus z is a common factor. So what I can do is I can basically just take that out. So if I do take out a 1 minus z here, then I should be getting something like this. 1 plus z from here right, 1 plus z, minus, since I took out one of the 1 minus z's, I have 1 minus z quantity squared left, okay? And this whole thing is equal to 0. Now, let's go ahead and simplify inside the parentheses, and that should look like the following. Uh, it's going to give me something like 1 plus z minus 1. So if you notice that, you're going to get a negative 2z with the negation. It's going to be a positive 2z. And then plus z squared, that's going to be a minus z squared here. And the whole thing is equal to zero again, right? So we have to negate basically everything inside the parentheses. Okay, now 1 minus z basically stays the same. And this expression here can be written as negative z squared plus 3z. And obviously the 1 cancels out and we end up with a simple, simple equation. And it's polynomial, so we can find the roots very easily. And it's in the factored form, pretty much. So obviously, we can pull out a negative z here. If we do, then we'll get something like this. Negative z 
multiplied by 1 minus z, and here we're going to get something like z minus 3. And the whole thing is equal to 0. So from here we get the z values. What are they? We get z equals 0, z equals 1, and z equals 3. Awesome. But we're not looking for z. We're not after z. We're looking for x. So what's the relationship between x and z? Do you remember that? Well, we said that 1 minus x, or was it x minus 1? Let's go look it up. Okay, here we go. So x minus 1 is equal to z squared. Therefore, x is equal to 1 plus z squared. And we wrote that here, right? x equals z squared plus 1. So that's what we're going to use here. x is equal to z squared plus 1. Let's go ahead and write that down. And then by substitution, we can basically find each x value here. For example, if z is equal to 0, then x is going to be 1. If z is equal to 1, then x is going to be 2, because you have to square and add 1. And if z is equal to 3, 3 squared plus 1 is going to equal 10. Now, do you think all these values are going to satisfy our original problem? Let's go ahead and check that out next. Okay, so now we have the following solutions, and let's see what our original equation says. Obviously, it would work because we didn't really square both sides. We should not have any extraneous solutions. But let's just check for fun. For example, if x equals 1, you get 1 plus 0, which is 1. If x equals 2, you get 0 plus 1, which is 1. If x is equal to 10, you get negative 2 plus 3, which is, again, 1. Therefore, all these solutions are going to work in our equation. And that brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.